Uh, Steve Weish of NFL Network is, is one of our favorites. He's been kind enough to join us. Steve, I've been watching a lot of your network lately. I have never seen the discussions. I have never seen the type of programming, the honesty, the emotion, for obvious reasons like I've seen with yourself and Jim Trotter and some amazing on-air people having, having really, really complicated, needed discussions. What has it been like? Thank you for joining us, by the way. What has it been like working in that environment? It, it's been refreshing because we haven't done them before. Okay. And there have been times, you know, I've been at the NFL Network since 2008. And there have been times when we've needed to have those and we just haven't had them. And it's the, the fact that we're at this point in, in our country with the with kind of the social unrest after the George Floyd murder um, that the network has said enough. It is time to have these discussions, and it is time to be unbridled with what we allow. Um, has has been has been important, and I, like like you're saying, it's registered with viewers, um, hopefully, and, and gotten people's attention because this is important to the players. It's important to the league, as we've heard Roger Goodell say. And I think you just can't, you just simply cannot ignore it. And, and that is what the, you know, again, we've been very fortunate at the network to not do, and that's ignored the issue. You know, it's funny because uh, when, when this first uh, became a conversation, and Sid and I have, have offered up our show as, uh, as kind of a platform without pretense for any of our friends, any of our co-hosts to come and say what they want to say. But what, one of the things that I've noticed, in, and what I was asking Steve a lot early was how is this different from the hundred, the thousand times before that we've walked down this road? And one of the important answers to all this is corporate acceptance of that uh, of something needs to change. And I believe that the NFL's ability to unite people um, could go a long way. And if there's if you're hearing corporate acceptance from the NFL, that's a big step because I don't know if we heard that three four years ago. Well, look, we've heard it from Roger Goodell, and and this is where I want to draw this thing because Roger Goodell is the head of the monolith that is the NFL, but there are still are thirty two other teams, so the the league itself is basically a sum of its thirty two parts. Right. And we haven't heard some of the things from the 32 owners that we've heard from Roger Goodell. So this is where I think a lot of us are waiting to see if there is going to be change. Because trust me, there are some owners in certain markets who I'm sure cringed when they heard Roger Goodell say Black Lives Matter or that I personally protest with you. So, you know, this is why, you know, look, it, this feels different. This feels like. You know, the, the league is not going to put sponsorships and partnerships ahead of uh, its players and right and wrong. But we'll see if that trickles down to all of the 32 teams, some of the 32 teams, and how that works out in certain markets. So I think there's still a lot of wait and see for the, the cynicism and the true belief in change um, really takes hold. Steve Weish, NFL Network here on Tim and Sid. Steve, I, um, my intention is not to get you in trouble at all, so if you don't want to answer the next question, please don't tell me to shut up and I'll talk about something else. But as I've been watching NFL Network and the job you guys have been doing, I was trying to rack my brain to 2016 when Kaepernick first took a knee and how much of the coverage was about that and how much of the coverage wasn't about that. But four years ago, what can you tell us about what the league was advising the station. Can you speak to that? Uh, they weren't necessarily advising the, the, the network um, because I was the one who first reported the story that Colin Kaepernick uh, was sitting down during the anthem. You know, in some ways, it, you know, we were really owning it, which, you know, was a, was a proud moment. But at the same time, it was such of what do we do? Right. Like, is there, a, is there a policy against not standing for the national anthem. So much of the league's reaction was um, kind of what I was just talking about. Oh my God, our sponsors are going to flip out if we've got people, you know, um, protesting during the national anthem or, or our ties with the military could become jeopardized. There was a whole lot of that reaction and very little 
um, response, although there was more coverage in a lot of media outlets as to why he was doing this, in large part because of me and, and other people pushing, this is why he is doing this. Um, and so I think now, four years later, that we have seen um, some evolution, more and more players doing things in terms of, if not protesting, working in their communities. And, and what Kaepernick did, heightening the awareness to some of the issues that when all of us who are home during all of this COVID crisis see George Floyd murdered under the knee of a very smug looking police officer who's looking into the sky as if the sun is setting and he's got nothing better to do that it hit, it hit differently. Mm -hmm. And I think the league saw it, the league saw its players react to it. The league saw its employees react to it. And they kind of said sponsorships, you know, you can feel how you you want, but we're going to do, we're going to err on the, on the, on the right side of right. And don't think they did that right away. Remember the first response to this was very, fell flat. It was very hollow. It didn't mention racism. It didn't mention police brutality. And that's why those players came out and those players said, no, here's what we want to hear. And then that's when Roger Goodell responded. So, for as, for as good as the NFL looks right now, I remember their first statement fell very, very flat. It, it's Steve Weiss, NFL Network, joining us here on Tim and Sid on Sportsnet, Sportsnet 360, and Sportsnet 59 of the Fan. When, when Drew Brees first made his statement on Yahoo Financial, I was worried that we were going to walk down a road where we were going to relitigate what we what we kind of figured out was already not about the flag. It was not about dishonoring servicemen it was about police brutality and equality but is there a way now in hindsight that drew Brees may have inadvertently started a conversation that the nfl was going to need to have anyway that's a great question um i don't know if, i don't know if it's a if it's a conversation it needs to have anyway because there are a lot of people who who feel that if you don't stand for the national anthem that you, that you are violating, um, the military or this and that, but it does seem, here's where I think it feels different is that even those people who believe that do seem to understand a little bit more why people would want to protest or that they will protest. Like, Hey, I may not agree with this, but I get why now, you know, and that's, and that's what, that's been a big part of Drew Brees' Mia culpa and his apologies and everything else. Um, and I think that's something that everyone can understand that, Hey, I may not agree with this or that, but I understand the why. And that's a, and that's a huge part of, I think of why this feels a little bit differently than the way things felt before. Steve Weish, NFL Network here on Tim and Sid. Steve, do you think uh, do you think Colin Kaepernick is an NFL employee again between now and September? Ooh, tough question. Tough question because you have to ask yourself if a team reaches out to him now, is it is it patronizing? Are they doing this because of, of what's what's happening, or are they doing this because they want him as a football player? Yeah. And I'm sure he's asking the same question. So, so my 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 answer is no. I don't think. Um, I don't think that he will be not necessarily that a team won't reach out to him, but I don't know if he, he has enough trust to think that the reasons behind a job offer would be um, anything less than, than patronizing. Steve White, NFL Network, joining us here on Tim. Is, is the next step for the NFL to get their owners on board? Is that... Is there, a, is there a, a, a faction of America just kind of looking at the NFL and saying, all well and good, Goodell is here. Where is Jerry Jones? Uh, where is Shad Khan? Where are the Pagulas? Like, is that the next step? Yep. Mm -hmm. I think that's what a lot of people are sitting around waiting to see. Because as I mentioned earlier, the league is the sum of its 32 owners. So it's 32 teams. And different owners, different owners, have different approaches to this. We know Jerry Jones during all of the Kaepernick stuff said, my guys are going to toe the line. But now we've seen 
Dak Prescott issue a very strong statement about this and donate money for, you know, police retraining for de-escalation techniques. Ezekiel Elliott was one of the players in that video saying, NFL, this is what we want to hear. So I, I know I am. I'm looking to see how some of these owners are going to respond. Because, uh, you know, again, you've seen by some of their actions before, they are far more concerned about sponsorships and their fan bases than they were about the feelings of their employees and players. So that's, that's the, the, the line I think we're all waiting to see, you know, be drawn if there is one to be drawn. I just, Steve, I, it wasn't that long ago the discussion in the NFL was, how do we get the Rooney rule to work? Like that was four weeks ago or less. I just don't trust an ownership group who can't even take those steps to now make the leap of, of speaking out, of signing cap, of doing the things that we've been talking about here. I just, I, I, I don't want to say trust, but it's trust. I, I don't, this ownership group as a whole have not provided anyone with any evidence that any of the things we have been talking about for the last 15 minutes are going to happen. Well, that's how come the league has had to ratchet up the Rooney rule, requiring these teams to interview multiple candidates of color. Because never forget this. In the 60s, integration in the United States was not voluntary. It was court mandated. Okay. So change, especially in the United States when it comes to racial issues or racial employment or racial equality, often has to be mandated or forced because people feel very comfortable dealing with people who look like them or who are in the same collegiate fraternities they are, they are or things like that. So I think, I think the skepticism, I think the, the, the lack of trust is well warranted when it comes to these issues. And, you know, this is, trust me, players feel the same way. Um, you, you've seen that in the round tables and, you know, the league is trying to fix its own its own house, its own hiring practices. When I say the league, the NFL network, the NFL offices in New York, NFL films, because it realizes it can't sit there and tell owners to change if it doesn't change. Because a lot of the decision makers, I will say this, very few decision makers in any of the NFL entities are people of color. Very few. And so the league finally seems to recognize that it can't sit there and throw stones in its own glass house. And again, that's where things feel like they're, they're starting to change. And if that's a start, then that's, that's a wheel, that's a wheel in motion. I want to be on. Right. Uh, great conversation. And we appreciate you having it with us, Steve.